Yo, what's up, everybody? Long time no see. It's your boy, Dave Mo. You already know what it is. So I've said it so many times now that, uh, you know, we're going to have some new things coming out. And we are. But uh, in my opinion, guys, you know I'm not a fan of car dealers to begin with. So let me just... Damn, I look mad. Hell, that's really not how I look. Um, There's no light where I am, so I think the thing is trying to overcompensate. Neither here nor there. But let's get right into this. Why? Why, why are car dealers scumbags and i want to say not every car dealer is a scumbag but the majority of them are so when people are out here dogging us out talking about oh we ain't shit this that the next thing i understand where they're coming from i'm not gonna front not every car dealer is a scumbag but the likelihood of finding a good one is slim to none and let me get into this story we have a car for sale it's a 1996 Lincoln Town Car. It's not nice, but the bones are there. In all honesty, it needs a $400 paint job, and it'll be a nice car. It's reliable. It was used, not this one in particular, but Lincoln Town Cars were used in the past as taxis. For those of us that don't know, anytime you see a vehicle that's used for taxi service, livery service, etc., etc., is going to be a good, reliable car because those industries use cars that are known to be tried and true. Reason being, they don't want to change engines every 50,000 miles. Their cars hit 300,000 miles. Yes, they do the scheduled maintenance on them because it's their investment. I'm not talking Toro here, guys. I'm talking legitimately taxi service, okay? So, with that being said, we have a Lincoln Town Car 1996. Needs paint. This car is probably a $400 paint job away from being what I would consider a $4,500 to $5,000 vehicle. But it hasn't been painted. We're waiting to get this one little strip put in the door. Then I'll send it for paint. Not a big deal. Leroy's friend of the family, a close friend to the family, comes by. Says, hey, I need a car. Okay. So they like the Lincoln Town Car. It's got low miles, about a hundred and. For argument's sake, 125,000 miles for a 1996. The car was cared for. What it wasn't done was, you know, the outside. Like, they weren't getting it waxed or anything else like that. But in terms of drivetrain and interior, the car was cared for. Um, not garage kept, obviously, because the paint was sunbeaten. And, you know, we have the New Deal um, loyalties in business. And we're doing business with this other XYZ dealer who's like, hey, look, until you guys get your financing, I'll do the financing for you guys. He charges a $300 dealer fee. So the deal was he'll finance our cars. He'll take the $300 dealer fee. We'll get the rest. Not a big deal, okay? So I'm not involved in this deal. Leroy calls him up and goes, hey, I got, you know. Now, Leroy doesn't say that it's family. Why he doesn't say that it's a family friend, I don't know. I don't know if potentially he wanted it to look like we just had a random customer because it'll give us clout or if he just didn't think about it. I don't know. I know me personally, when it's got to do with my family or family friends, I let it be known. And really what I'm doing is I'm letting you know, don't fuck around. All right. That's my family. That's my a close family friend of mine. Don't fuck around because if you fuck around, you and I are going to have to get into it one way or another, right? Like, there's money coming back. We're knocking money off the loans, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's how I do business. Right or wrong, I protect mine above everything else. I will take money out of my pocket. I will make less money. Case in point. Yesterday, Leroy calls me up, and his stepfather is renting a room to this female. And he says, you know, oh, she's been renting the room for like a year or so. And um, I have a 2009 uh, Volvo C70. Again, $400 paint job away from being a six or a $7,000 car, okay? And a good detail. Let's get that straight, guys. It really needs a real good detail. And I bought the leather dye for it, and I was just going to dye it at my house. Not necessarily a big deal. Needless to say... Leroy says, you know, what do you want for that car? I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's a close family friend, blah, 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 blah. Don't even worry about it. I'm not in it that deep. Just, you know, throw me 2150. 
Because even though I'm hooking his friend up, I'm still going to bless him with the $150 that he gets for selling cars. Um, I don't know necessarily how I feel about that, but I don't really care. So I guess I do know how I feel. I don't care. So I'll, I'll give him the 150 I'll take the two grand, and that's it. Did I make a lot of money? No, I did not. Do I make a decent amount of money throughout the year selling cars? Absolutely. So in a situation like this where I can make money, a, a small amount of money, and hook someone up that's close to someone that I'm close to, it makes sense to me, okay? You may disagree. You may agree. But I am a loyal individual. That's who I am. I'm a dying breed. I'm loyal, okay? So back to the story. So this car dealer that we're supposed to be doing business with, we're supposed to be building trust with, has made no, no, you know, no miscommunications about this. He does not trust me. That's cool. Because I told him, I was like, I don't trust you. I'm only in this room because of this guy right here, and I trust him. So if this man is telling me I could trust you, then I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and we could do some business. If it turns out to be something different, well, then we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, okay? So anyway, Leroy sends the guys over there um, at 1.30. They get approved for the car, and a funny phone call occurs. So now you got to understand, Danny's running point. Leroy's running point. So Danny and Leroy are the same person. Leroy is the name he goes by, but because we're family, I call him Danny. But for all intents and purposes, it's Leroy. So Leroy gets the phone call. And uh, it's a weird phone call. And the guy says, hey, what do you want for this car? And he goes, oh, well, I told the guy $2,500. Not really a big deal. Something quick, we're going to finance it. Something quick, you know, the guy will pay like 100 bucks a month, 150 bucks a month. With the down payment and everything else, he should be out of this car within 12 months. Build up some credit and be able to get him into something nicer. That's the goal. You take care of people. Whether or not this individual was a family member or a close family friend, if you do business like this with everybody, you might not make as much money up front, but you will continue to make money and you'll continue to make money from that individual moving down the road because once they fix that credit, they know they want to come with you because you're an honest person. You do honest business. You have their best interest at heart. Why would they not want to do business with you? They may even go so far as to bring family members to the lot to do business with you directly. I try to build relationships, okay? That's what I do in my business. That's why a lot of my cars are resale. So, um, repeat customers. So, they'll buy one car. They're happy with it. They'll come back again. I don't lie. I have no reason to lie to people. I invite them to bring their mechanic. Any issues that they arise, I'm like, well, let's talk about it. Let's negotiate it out of the price because I don't want the headache. I'm going to give it to you. You got the price lower because you are taking responsibility for this issue. All right. So at any rate, um, the guy calls Danny. It just seemed weird, right? It was just like, hey, uh, you know, so if I got you 2500 for this car out the door, um, you'd be happy. So Danny's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, of course, of course. So then he calls me up and I'm like, yo, you know what that sounds like to me is it sounds like it's a wholesale deal. And uh, Leroy's like, no, 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 they're going to do financing. I'm like, no, no, I, I get that. So one dealer, us, is selling another dealer a vehicle. That dealer is taking care of the financing to the customer, right? So between us and them, he's going to pay this wholesale price. After he pays that price, the car is his and he's going to up the price to this individual, even though the deal was already set out months ago that if we sent someone over, he gets his $300 deal fee for doing the paperwork, and then that, that's it. So Leroy's like, no, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm like, I, I don't know either, all right? I don't know either. That's your boy. I'm letting you know with the wording he's using, that's what it sounds like to me. I was like, but here's what we could do. When your friend buys that car, have them bring the paperwork by and we could take a look at it. Okay. At this point now, Leroy's very skeptical. He's like, yo, I told you in the beginning he was going to try to do shit like this because he did it to somebody else. 
And then I was like, this is true. You told me that he did it to somebody else, but you also told me that you guys are friends. And he said in front of you what the deal was going to be. So I take people at the word. A deal is a deal. Um, needless to say, we get the paperwork back. He took a $2,500 car, sold it to this guy for $4,750, uh, $6,100 after fees. And in my opinion, this is why car dealers are scumbags. He could have left the numbers the same. He could have been happy making his little three hundred dollars, because paperwork ain't shit, right? Um, you, you you type someone's social security number into a system and it tells you if they get approved or not, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so, you know, and on top of that, he fucked Leroy, because now he's not saying to Leroy, "Hey, I sold this car for forty seven hundred dollars. I'm gonna take my three hundred dollar dealer fee." Bro, I hooked you up. I got you forty three hundred for the car, right? Forty seven subtract three is forty four. I got you forty four hundred dollars for the car. Here you go. Now, either we could have done one of two things. Number one, we could have been like, "Yo, we don't need that much money for the car. Let's reimburse it or whatever we got to do." Or two, we could have said, "Hey, you know what? We wanted twenty five for the car. You took three hundred. That leaves forty four hundred, so it's about nineteen hundred dollars. For argument's sake, we'll say two grand. You give us the opportunity to see the type of men that we are, and what we could have did was been like, "Yo, check it out. We wanted twenty five. There's forty four. Let's say forty five hundred for argument's sake, so it's an even two grand. You sold it for forty five hundred. That leaves a two thousand dollar extra profit margin. Let's split it. Let's split it. Let's be men. Let's split it. You hooked us up. Here's your thousand. Here's our thousand. Thank you. Moving forward. Thank you. Don't do that, though, because, you know, we don't want to bury people in cars. That's not what we're into this for. But you did it. It's done. Here you go. Instead, this guy took that $2,000 extra and put it in his pocket. In actuality, he made more profit than we did on that vehicle. Total scumbag move. He also buried this buyer, this customer, in this vehicle. This guy specifically picked out this car because it was $2,500. Unfortunately, I wasn't there to negotiate with the guy. And really and truly, there should be no negotiations. When he spoke to Leroy and Leroy said $2,500, he should have been like, yo, Leroy said $2,500. Why are we spending so much more money? And it should have deaded the conversation right there. The dude should have got up and walked the fuck on. Or called Leroy from the desk. I'm like, yo, Leroy, this guy sitting here telling me X, Y, Z. Leroy could have gotten on the phone and been like, yo, what, what, you know, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what are you talking about? Um, and this happens time and time and time again. Um, the 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 law is is pretty pretty straightforward here in the state of Florida, the advertised price of the vehicle has to be the selling price. Less tax, title, registration, if you put gap insurance on there or warranties, aside from any add-ons, okay? So if I put $10,000 on this car, the car has to sell for ten grand. Now, I can charge a dealer fee, because that's additional. So the dealer fee will get in there. Tax, title, registration, that's additional, okay? Um, any dock fees, that's additional. If I'm financing it and the customer decides that they want to have gap insurance, that's additional, right? Because you want to say it's the out-the-door pricing. It's very difficult to do out-the-door pricing because everyone's situation is different. So here in Florida, it's a $225 impact fee. So if I sold this car for $10,000 out the door, someone comes in and, and has a tag, then that makes me $225 more. <clears throat> If someone comes in and doesn't have a tag, that costs me $225 more. That's why out-the-door pricing is very, very difficult, especially here in Florida. Certain states where the tags stay with the car forever, then it doesn't matter, right? Um, so understand, there's a lot of people out there that say out-the-door pricing is the way to go. Out-the-door pricing also could outprice you against your competition because the average buyer is looking at cars... Say this car is, in fact, a $10,000 car, but with tax title registration, now it's up to $13,000, right? 
So now I am the highest car for sale. And I'm trying to explain people that includes everything. People, most people don't understand that. They don't want to get involved with that. They don't know about that. So that's why out the door pricing kind of sucks. Back to car dealers being scumbags. This is the exact, exact reason why car dealers have a bad reputation. This guy has done this to a shit ton of car people. As a matter of fact, he built his business on the lowest of low credit applicants because he feels in his head they have nowhere else to go. So 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 what 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 is that mentality, right? It's predator and prey. He is making his business sucking the lifeblood out of people in bad situations doesn't care what their situation is just wants them to have a bad situation so he could capitalize on it i'm not i don't i I don't know if it's bad because on the other side it's like well look if no one's taking a chance on them i'm going to take a chance on them i should be compensated i suppose you're right but to what degree to what degree right and at what point are we just taking advantage of people that are not financially educated at what point are we looking at this like you know this guy really doesn't know about finances i'm just gonna bury him and in all honesty if you were able to get this guy approved for that kind of money i had a beautiful 2008 volvo that ran perfect looked great the whole nine yards i would have sold that to him for still 700 dollars less than what this guy charged him he's driving around in a 1996 Lincoln Town Car versus a 08 Volvo S80 for more money than the S80. And to me, that's just, that's bad business. Uh, honestly, guys, I would love to hear your comments, especially from dealers that do this type of activity. Just don't say you do it. Um, I, I just want to hear like different ideas and, and what you think, disagree, agree. Whatever, I can answer any circumstances that I may have left out. I will gladly bring them in. Um, So, yeah, let me know, guys, because I I, got to be honest. I'm not overly thrilled with, number one, him taking advantage of the customer. Number two, I have to feel like like he stole money from Leroy, right? Because you can't just buy the car and then do something else to it. And it's funny because he keeps saying, he's like, yo, Bring all those dollar menu cars here. Now I understand why he wants those dollar menu cars there. Because if I can pay you $2,500 for the car and then sell it for $4,700, I'm going to make, uh, what am I going to make there? Uh, $2,200, right? So, yeah, it makes sense. But that's not the business deal, number one, that we agreed to. Number two, we don't want to kill our customers. And it's just, that was one, two, right? I didn't go one, three. But anyway, uh, I don't know, guys. It just, it's fuck shit, really, in my opinion. But let me know, because I'm eager, I'm eager to find out. I want to know your train of thought. And, you know, maybe I'm dead wrong. And, it, it, and I could be wrong. Maybe I'm not seeing something that you see. You know, maybe I'm right. Let me know. Let me know in the comments, man. I, you know, I, 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 I pride myself on being a, a stand-up dude. You know what I'm saying? I pride myself on being, uh... A man that that if I give you my word, you you could take that to the bank. I pride myself on on doing certain things as a man. In my life, I don't put money first. It's definitely up there, okay? It's up there, but it's not the end all be all for me. I'm not willing to get rich by fucking over people. Now I am willing to get rich by fucking over people that know, right? Like if you want to have a battle of the wits and see who comes out on top, let's do it. I'm down. I'm down for this. Okay. I'm, I'm down. That's not be me being a bully. That's me taking on competition that they believe that they can do things better than I can. I'm down with that. What I'm not down with is taking advantage of the less fortunate. Okay. I'm not for that. I am. I've never been for that lifestyle. I've always stood up to the bullies and in, in this game that we're in, uh, financial ignorance or lack there of financial uh education is a weakness okay and dealers take advantage of that some dealers take advantage of that this needs to stop this needs to stop on an ethical 
level. I don't know if the, I don't think the law should be involved, but I think what we need to do is start calling these guys out by name and being like, yo, this is what it is. I'm not necessarily calling this individual out by name because it wasn't my deal. So I, I don't want to willy nilly step on anyone's toes, but if it was me versus him, it would be what it is. As a matter of fact, I seen this coming so much that I have already made moves with my own credit companies. If any of you guys know any other credit companies that are willing to do business with a new dealership, um, I have excellent credit score. Um, I have a career and a home and these are things that they look for. Uh, you know, definitely send them my way or, or hit me up with their information. And you know, I, I, I'm down to use whoever, but at any rate, guys, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry. I, I, it's been so hit and miss with me. It's been crazy, crazy. I, I work at my job now six days a week. Um, killing the overtime, killing, killing the overtime. Um, so I'm doing six days a week here, plus starting the dealership, uh, waiting for the final paperwork to go through so we can start moving vehicles over, uh, trying to set up, um, not necessarily a floor plan, but uh, bank financing. So there's a lot going on right now, and that's why I haven't been able to get with you guys on a regular basis. We the the um, the Patreon or YouTube level thing, it's already done. So we're just waiting to unroll it when I have more time that I can focus with you guys. We broke it up into three different levels, uh, three different price things where you can pay the monthly fee and, and we can go over some auctions together. One, like one auction a week, look at certain cars, you know, and then the end, the, the larger one is it's a lot more money monthly. Um, it's not for everybody. Honestly, it's, it, it doesn't have to be for anybody. And we would automatically get at least uh, once or twice a week. It's up to you where we could go over different ideas. Um, we actually, you know, we can like have a Zoom meeting or whatever where it's one on one and we're going to look at every single car. You want to look at every single auction. I will do my own homework and I will tell you why I think this would be a good buy, why I think this would not be a good buy. I'll learn about your, your industry, your area rather. And we'll take it from there. You know, um, it should be fun. Um, these things were not built by me. This was built by somebody else or, you know, set up by somebody else because I'm not that good at it. And it was constructed, not, it might not be for you, but there's a handful of individuals that have offered or wanted this option. So it's not for everybody. The videos aren't going to change. The information I give to you guys is not going to change. There'll still be a free area for us. It's not, none of that's going to change. What is going to change is if you wanted to buy this time block of my life, you can, and it's dedicated to you and you alone. Um, and that's it, guys. So I don't know. I hope you, I hope you, hope you subscribe. Hope you give me a thumbs up, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one, whenever that might be. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Bye.